Hello everyone, this is a Donneron Monologue Podcast. I am your host, Bo, and today, as always, we will be discussing the viability and importance of video games as an artistic medium, and also that they're just wicked cool. Right now, you're probably seeing a lot in the news about nurses and what nurses go through and what a nurse does. Obviously, we're going through a time when nurses are very much needed. And if you're interested in learning more about nursing, achieving a higher education there, insight into what a life is like as a nurse, then we strongly suggest you check out Ashley Luann K on YouTube. You can find a link to her channel at rallynetwork.net or by searching Ashley Luann K on YouTube. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are doing another episode of a social distancing edition. This is a... Uh, it's becoming more comfortable and more strange each time I do it. Uh, and part of the reason it's becoming strange is because uh, it just so happens that there's a lot of changes going on at Donneram right now, as uh, you, the listeners, probably already noticed. Or have already noticed, rather. And it's uh, it's very strange because um, we now have an intro, like a set intro uh, for things that we do. Um, and this is pretty common to a lot of professional sounding podcasts. Uh, not to say that it's one of the requisites for sounding professional, but you get what I mean. And so now uh, when I come in here, um, I'm just sort of cold going into what I'm talking about rather than saying hi and greetings and introducing myself because uh, you know who I am. You heard it in the intro. Uh, but the intro sounds great. I love it. Uh, this is progress. It's just progress. Even progress that we want sometimes feels weird. And uh, so the subject at hand, I took a break from it yesterday, but the subject at hand is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Since these videos are coming out daily and they're shorter, um, I had the opportunity to take a single subject and break it down into multiple pieces. And uh, something I should have covered at the beginning, uh, something I was very remiss for not coming covering at the beginning, I was just very excited to play the new game, and that is uh, uh, the original Final Fantasy VII. It, it, as much as this is a different game, as much as this is a standalone game, it exists because of the first one, the original. Uh, I, I want to say the original because first makes it sound like this is a sequel. This is definitely not a sequel. Although, how cool would it be if it was like the Evangelion rebuild, so where there's by the end of this we have a legitimate debate over whether or not this was a sequel in some crazy way, or a, oh, that is awesome. That's actually really cool if this became comparable to the uh, Evangelion rebuilds. So, um, something I've discovered about myself uh, over these past few weeks, because something I've been doing, and I certainly hope some of you have found the uh, insight and time to do, is a little self-introspection. You're with yourself a lot right now, and you're stuck with yourself your whole life you might as well make that person someone you can stand to be around. And um, I'm not ashamed to admit it. That's not always been the case in my life, and it's not always been the case in a lot of people's lives. A lot of us haven't really liked ourselves all that much. But I've done a lot of deep introspective and um, introspection, and uh, I've discovered I'm, I'm someone I like very much, and that's a good thing. Um, worshipping yourself, I think, is a problem, but liking yourself or even loving yourself, I think, is a perfectly healthy thing. So uh, something I've discovered is I've, I, I've discovered as I do this, I'm going back and looking at a lot of um, art I consume, which art is a huge part of my life in all forms. I just talked to you guys about video games because I feel like no one else really discusses video games as the artistic medium they are. Of course people do, but it, it's not very loud. Um, the uh, I just told Adam earlier, he, had a, uh, he gave me an example, but I thought it's what he actually wanted me to say going into the intro. And I was like, man, that just sounds like the guy in front of the wall of Funko Pop figures, which is fine. That's cool if you're that guy or you like that guy's videos. That's perfectly cool. It's just, it's really not who we are. So, anyway, I'm rambling. I, uh, I'm sorry. I don't talk to very many people <laughs> anymore. And this is sort of my uh, cry out to the world. So, um, you'll have to bear with me at the beginning of these before I really pick up steam. And this sort of gets my voice ready. I actually have a... Uh, piping hot cup of Earl Grey tea here I'm sipping on to get my throat ready for rambling. But anyway, I've discovered something about myself recently. And that is, I'm, I'm going back and looking at things I've discovered, art that I've discovered as an adult that I really enjoy. And a lot of them, some of them I, I love, of course, but a lot of them I'm looking at them again and I'm like, man, I don't like this at all. It's, it's just not who I really am. But I'm going back and looking at art that I loved as a child or a teenager, and I'm seeing 
really what stuck with me from these uh, these works. And I'm loving them all the more. Uh, I'm seeing how they affected me growing. And I suppose, now that I mentioned that out loud, I suppose what I'm not liking... Um, excuse, excuse me, by the way, if you hear a tapping, I'm flipping my marker. I'm sure a lot of you people have seen me do that on uh, on the podcast, if you watch on YouTube. But um, just a nervous habit of mine. But uh, I'm discovering where these are these works of art that I discovered as an adult that I'm finding I don't really like. I'm seeing where they possibly could have been leading me before I had this time off to think. And I'm not enjoying them as much as I do the ones from when I was a uh, child or a teenager. And uh, this is all important because um, one of the things I discovered as a child was Final Fantasy VII. It was the second JRPG I ever played. The first that I fully understood was a JRPG. Um... And uh, the first JRPG I ever played was Super Mario RPG, a fantastic, incredible game. We will be discussing that on Donneron, whether that's me and Don discussing it on the podcast or uh, me discussing it here with you folks, perhaps even after I'm done with this Final Fantasy VII series. But uh, Final Fantasy VII, I remember I discovered it because a, a new kid showed up at my elementary school in fourth or fifth grade, I can't quite remember, and he had an older brother who was a high schooler. This was just a that was just such a sitcommy '90s thing was to have the really cool older brother with the Goldfinger poster in his room, not not 007 Goldfinger the movie the the ska band, and uh, they and you know the puka shell necklace, the kind of long hair, um, and you know this sort of it, there was just a really mystique about your friend's older brother and the cool things he had in his room. One of the cool things this fellow had in his room was, of course, Final Fantasy VII. And I remember playing it. It was just so different. It was so mature and so dark and so real, man. Even those old polygonal models, they were just so real. And so I got really, really into this game, really into it. I I mentioned on um, another one uh, earlier that I had the Brady Games uh, strategy guide memorized, word for word. I, I had this game memorized. I know where everything is. And uh, until the remake came out and I started doing the series and had all this time to look back on things that affected me growing up, as I mentioned earlier, I never really thought about why I loved it so much. I just did. And uh, Final Fantasy, and uh, I actually wrote a section for Final Fantasy VII in the Donneron, uh coffee table book we did. This is not hard reading. This is not a... Um, this is not a impactful, deep novel. It's just us sharing our ideas and thoughts about video games. I think it's very, very fun. It's very good light reading for, like I said, coffee table. Um, Going to be spending a little bit of time in the bathroom? Bring this along with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, the link for that book, uh, available through Amazon on Kindle or uh, paperback, uh, will be in the description of this uh, podcast. So, um, back to track. I-, I wrote that section in that book. And uh, one of the things I shared was how it got me attached to these characters. And it really did. And I'm realizing that seeing them now in uh, full HD with today's rendering styles and animation styles and everything, it's it's a lot like seeing, seeing a kid you know growing up. Like when you're an adult and you know your friends and then you see their kid again. And you're like, man, you've grown. It, it, it's given me a lot of that feeling. I was really attached to these characters, and I never realized it so much as when I'm seeing them now and seeing their personality shine better through both through this amazing voice acting that's going on in this game and also through being exposed to them more because we're focusing on one small aspect of the original story and expanding it to be its own self-inclusive story. And uh, so we're going to end, honestly, from a better localization I'll I'll say it I've said it a million times before I will admit what was wrong with something I loved but I fell in love with these characters in 1997 of course 1998 sorry I played it a year later so and that's really what set this game apart was these characters and um Final Fantasy 7 deals with death in a real way um again spoiler alert for the original game I don't care it came out in 1997 you've had your time Please play this game. Um, you've, you've had plenty of time. Avalanche dies. 
in Final Fantasy VII. Everyone in Avalanche except for uh, Barrett and Tifa don't really consider Cloud part of Avalanche. He was a mercenary. But uh, Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse die. They die when the uh, when the uh, Sector uh, Seven plate falls, uh, a move that Shinra makes to eliminate Avalanche. That is something I'm scared. I'm not to that point in the remake yet, and it is scaring me to death that it's going to happen because I've become so attached to these characters. And it was it was weird at the time because I was a kid playing this game, and I was like, wait a minute, characters don't die. I mean, you die and you have an extra man and you come back to life or an extra life, as some kids say. But, but they don't really die permanently in video games. That's so That was so weird to me. That was so odd. And, of course, the, the big one was uh, Aerith, or Ares, as, uh, Aeris, or Ares, as she was called in the original localization. We are now correctly calling her Aerith. When, when, when she died, that, of course, I mean, that changed video gaming forever. That was, that was the moment. Um, that was a pivotal moment artistically for video games. And I think that's just a... Uh, this is all just something that made this game stand out a lot. And the gameplay, the materia, was so deep. Finding out materia combinations, I'm so glad to see that's returned. I'm so glad about that. The materia is almost working, almost identical to the way it did originally. So all these things combined to make a really, really different game for a kid who just got done playing Sonic earlier that day. And and I think that's what... um. And, and when I went back and played other JRPGs, I almost had a hard time getting into other ones because they weren't at Final Fantasy VII's level yet. Final Fantasy VII was such a leap forward for the genre as a whole that I, I think it was difficult for me to even accept other ones. I had to go... I had to basically play other uh, Final Fantasies before I could even enjoy other JRPGs. And it, it, it was... It was just hard to describe. I love this game so much. It was every time I went outside to play, uh, play with my friends. We, we didn't make believe we were X Men as our friends were doing. We were members of the Final Fantasy VII party. Um, it, it was just, and and it led me into all these other things. Um, I started consuming fantasy literature much more. I started exploring that much more. I I just wanted more of whatever was going on in this game. Worlds of magic and mystery and action and bravery. I wanted more of that. And you get that in other video games, certainly, but not to the extent that you do in a JRPG. And certainly not one like Final Fantasy VII. Every character has a relationship with each other that seems organic and real. And seeing them do that, but better in the remake, is just... See, I'm, I told you I was talking about the original. I'm still talking about the re- remake because it's just absolutely taken me. It's like uh, when you first started dating your significant other. Uh, best way I could describe it. But... um there's a real there was a real urgency to press the story on I remember being stuck on bosses and not being distraught because I couldn't beat the boss but being distraught because I wouldn't see what happened next uh, Guy Natak and, um, or Natak or however you pronounce it I might not even got the. I told you I have this game memorized but certain things slip the memory as time goes on I have not played it this year yet so because I intend to play it once I'm done with the remake but uh that one was one that just really muddled me for a long time. My party was not ready whatsoever. And uh, we eventually became ready because I just threw an X potion at him. There was ways to get around things like that. Like, you could be clever like that. So, uh, he was technically undead, so healing him hurt him. Uh, I, I realized that because I actually cast Cure on him. And I noticed that it did damage. So, it's like an X potion cures all damage. So, I threw it at him. That also works on the uh, President decoy in Final Fantasy VIII when you're on the train. Little tip there. But e- these things, um, being able to buy the mansion in Costa del Sol, you can't really do anything with it. It's just a free end. And at that point, that doesn't matter that much because you can use the high one for that. But just little details like that made the game feel very real. Uh, much more real than other games felt to me at the time. And uh, so I just wanted to, I suppose the whole point of this was just getting across that I loved the original Final Fantasy VII. And that is why I love the remake. That That's the main reason why I love the remake. So it, 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 it's like I said earlier with the characters, but it's, with the whole game as a whole, it's like seeing one of your, it's like seeing not, maybe not as intensely as your own child, but a, a younger cousin or a younger sibling 
having grown up and seeing them and being like, man, you've accomplished so much. You've grown. And that's what this whole thing's been like. It's, uh, there's, um, I know I'm stumbling a lot here. It's just hard to put into words what Final Fantasy VII did to me. Um, the theories you can have about the game, the mystery to it. I remember discussing things like, uh, what was on that island in the uh, far northeastern corner of the map. Of course, it's Knights of the Round, and you cannot land there with your high wind, so you have to breed a gold chocobo to get there. Things of that nature. There's just so much going on in this game. And uh, I I sincerely hope that people that are playing the remake played the original before diving into it or intend to go through the original afterwards because... And uh, I've said several times on Donnerom that my favorite thing about this remake is that it's different enough to where it does not negate the original. I don't want to not want to play the original ever again. And Nomura has absolutely delivered on that because one of the things I'm feeling most intensely about playing this remake is I want to go back and play the original. So, uh, guys, uh, that, that's going to be it for today. Um, I'll hit you up again tomorrow or uh, Monday. Uh, we still haven't decided what format we're going to do with that. If you have ideas, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you want to hear more Final Fantasy VII, I'm super ready to talk about that. But if you want me to break it up more like I did yesterday, that's that's fine too. Uh, that's more than fine, actually. And uh, so, uh, anyway, um, like, subscribe, share out to your friends, of course. And, uh, of course, through as we continue to go through um, social distancing, uh, please be safe and uh, uh, keep, you know, keep, keep on, uh, keep on, keep on gaming there. That sounds like, sounds like something that Funko Pop guy would say. So, uh, good night and I will see you later.